Hello, Babula, and hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Astrology Now. Thanks for joining me, Babula. A pleasure as always. We look forward to our fortnightly chats. We do, we do. We've sort of cracked on to a really busy year with the Capricorn energy still around, haven't we? Um, yeah, there's plenty of Capricorn energy to keep us uh, focused, absolutely. Yeah. And, of course, with the big, big story this year is Pluto's gone into Aquarius. We touched on that um, bit last month, uh, last lunar cycle, not last month. A meme on social media the other day, I think I shared it, was, um, you know, two women sitting and chatting and one says, wow, it's been such a big year. And a friend says, it's still January. And that's exactly how it feels. I know, I know. So um, what? I, now I'm just looking at that image behind you, the painting that you've done. Even she looks like she'd been blown away. <laughs> But, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you kick us off with uh, all, uh, what's been going on right now before we get into. Um, yes, the, okay. Um, okay, so we, we will sort of come back to um, our friend in the underworld, Pluto, of course, on the 21st of January, which is just last week. Um, Pluto left the sign of Capricorn where he has been since 2008. So very, very slow moving out of planet. For those who may be new to this and not so familiar, Pluto is a, an outer planet, moves very slowly and represents an energy force actually of um, deep transformation, death and rebirth. And his methods, if we can kind of speak in a personal way, personalised metaphors, is through destruction, yeah, you know, destruction, dismantling, breaking down, dredging things up from the shadows that we don't always want to see, that aren't always comfortable, that we have kept or have been kept in the shadows for a reason, mm. uh, and that could be a very dark reason in some cases. Mm. And Pluto will bring those things up to the surface in relation to the sign that he's slowly moving through. So whole generations of people are born with Pluto in a particular sign. And so I think, you know, I think of all the children and the babies who've been born since 2008, and that includes my two grandchildren, they're all born with Pluto and Capricorn. They are mm -hmm. and will continue to be as they grow into adulthood and so on, the Pluto and Capricorn generation and soul group mm. and yeah so you know where pluto is moving through bigger periods of time is very important to our understanding and so it's been in capricorn you know the sign of worldly success and achievement and um um and, and governments and organizations and systems and so on mm been doing a mighty job since 2008 so you know we've spoken of these things before but it's worth sort of just yeah kind of capture that sort of um so, yeah. energy yeah I'm just I'm just wondering uh your perception of how that particular generation Pluto and Capricorn generation will um grow up and evolve um in their dem demographic you know yes. how do you see them moving forward as young adults? Yes, that's a no. great question. Mm. And if we were to look at those souls of that generational group, and I'll use the term, it's one that many people relate to, like the older souls amongst them, they will have a strong sense that they may not obviously see yet because they're young. My two young grandchildren have that and, you know, they're just in early primary school. Um but they have a job to do. Like, And if you think about what's going on during this period as Pluto's been going through Capricorn, boy, oh, boy, has so much been exposed and revealed about how this world actually operates and functions and who's operating it. And um, so these young people, as they grow up and take up their roles in the world, many of them have got an enormous job to do to support humanity to, I think, to build new forms and new systems and structures and organisations, mm. hopefully based on 
the higher qualities of Capricorn, which are integrity, mm -hmm. you know, and honesty and um, so on. Mm. So, and, and, of course, that will depend on where those individual uh, kids, now kids, have this placed in their chart, whether it's an important theme for them. Some of the traumas associated with this as well, mm. right, because Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio, Um also associate is associated with traumatic, very intense life experiences, mm. you know, and the world has been through a great deal of trauma in the last four years while Pluto's been, you know, dredging his way through these, these last degrees of Capricorn. So children born into that will have all been on the receiving end of that. And for some that will have been very challenging and very difficult depending on their family circumstances and exactly how that's kind of played out in their own situation. So as young adults, they'll be dismantling old worn out systems uh, and, and establishing new ones. Yes. Uh, and um I actually, yeah, I can I can just see and, and they'll be very good at it. I think so. And they will be consistent and they'll have long-term goals about where yeah. they want to, to go. Well, we just had a glitch <laughs> which knocked us off Zoom for a few hours, but we're back again. And I think we're up to the point where we're talking about children of the um, generation which were born with, what was it, Pluto in? Capricorn. Capricorn, yes. And what they might be like as ad as young adults. Yeah, mm. that, that's right. So, you know, born from two thousand and eight onwards, um, and currently, of course, babies being born like right now, like today, and over the next few months, we'll have Pluto in very early Capricorn. But, but from two thousand and eight up until this point, up in you mean in Aquarius? Oh, in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Beg your pardon. Yes, I realised I'd said the wrong thing. Um, up until this point, they have Pluto and Capricorn. So we spoke about that. So we'll see if we can kind of smoothly and professionally move into what we were talking about. So, so many of them will have a strong sense of mission and purpose and be up for the job of taking on board these big themes and issues that we've all been living through to help and be a part of the, um, gee, I was going to say, and I will say, the ground crew, you know, to sort of get things running again but in a very different way. And remember, as they come into adulthood, they're going to be doing that while Pluto's in Aquarius. And then in 2044, when they're well and truly into adulthood, Pluto will move into Pisces. So ideally that would suggest that that, that group could be very um, up for the job of, of taking humanity forward and this world forward in a very different way to what it's been before. Mm. You know, much more conscious, more knowledgeable, more in alignment with the Aquarian principles because it isn't just Pluto going into Aquarius that's heralding the Aquarian age. There's a lot of other parts to that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, um, you know, they would be um, facing the challenge of challenges of life steadily, um, you know, as they because they hang on to these long term goals, you know, which is Capri what Capricorn has. It's it's enduring, it's lasting, it's you know, it keeps right. going, and and they'll probably have a you know an eye on, um, you know, where they want to go. That that's right. Yeah, that's stay, right. Stay the path. Stay the path and be very dedicated and focused on that. And of course, in their individual charts, it also depends obviously on the entire chart and how Capricorn sits in the chart and what it's doing in their particular chart. But but as a group, yeah, absolutely. As a group, that's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So they've got, you know, a big job ahead of them. Um, and many of them will absolutely have the grit and the determination to take that on, you mm. know. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, may the force be with them because it's 
going to be quite something. Um, I mean, some of them are still very young, of course, but from 2008, some of them are right now, if they were born in the early part, you know, they're in their mid-teens, that, that kind of age. That's right, yeah. yeah. So they won't be ready for that huge task yet, but um, it will come. That's right. So, yes, it's pretty, pretty... Um, Power. But, you know, because such an important slow-moving outer planet is changing signs, and it's always very significant when the outer planets change signs because they don't do it very often, yeah. and a, a whole bunch of them are changing signs all within two or three years of each other over the next mm -hmm. few years. That's extraordinary. So the the energetic shifts, you know, the um, zeitgeist shifts, the paradigm shifts that are underway now and still to come are phenomenal, huge. Mm, many yeah. of them. <laughs> like many of them. Waves breaking on the beach continuously and here's another and here's another. Yes, and, of course, you know, Pluto is so powerful and, and Aquarius is a sign that often operates through rebellion and shock waves, even in the, in the Earth, like, you know, Uranus is about to turn direct so the uranus rules aquarius and its energy is very strong right now which would i think contribute to the weird sort of computer glitch we've just experienced <laughs> you know the technology things go what and we couldn't figure out what was going on yeah yeah but here we are so um yeah things can happen in very unexpected ways you know rapid acceleration of technology of consciousness so, and, and the urge in people for freedom. I was just reading something this morning about the early history of the United States and that the, um, the, the Declaration of Independence, the opening lines are all about we the people. Mm. That is Aquarius in a nutshell. Mm. Yes, yes. And the birth chart of the United States has the moon and the south node in Aquarius. And Capricorn's uh, Pluto is going to be moving across those energies over the next few years. So we're going to see some mightily huge changes and shifts that I feel are going to come directly from the people because yeah. it's really up to the people. All, all over the world, this is up to the people now. Mm. It's it's certainly going to be revolutionary and yes. um, revelatory. And with yeah, you know, with a big mix of disruptive change thrown in just for the heck of it, you know. <laughs> That's right. Yes, and and that will include you know big things happening with the Earth herself and big movements and financial lot of disruptions. It won't all be easy at all, but um, it's such a huge thing that it's not going to be just a little gentle walk in the park. It can't be, you know. Mm. Yeah. I think it's going to be big like what we've been through with the, you know, in 2020 with the pandemic where the world just shut down. There's going to be a whole lot of things that are going to happen on a, on a global scale. That's right. Mm. That's right. It is global. That's right. We were having a conversation recently about in World War II, some places in the world had no idea there was even a war going on because they were completely uh, um, geographically out of the way of it yeah. and we're not touched by it in any way well that's over you know everything that goes on on the planet now is you know we are all aware of it yeah I think that the thing with change is to not be sucked into the vortex say you're going down the gurgler but to ride the surface of it you know like on a on a surfboard on a wave it's just Exactly. And, and be opportunistic and navigate your way through and see where the best way to go is as you as you walk the path, you know. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. You know, riding the wave is a very strong phrase that's with me at the moment. And mm -hmm. um, even on a daily basis, you know, ride the wave, just keep riding that wave. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for yep. sure. Yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so the sun, I mean, even if Pluto hadn't gone into Aquarius a few days ago, the sun has, and that would happen at this time every year. So we're definitely in the Aquarian time of year. So all the Aquarians are having, having their birthdays in the next few weeks. Um, so it has a very high vibration, this sign. And, you know, it's about consciousness and 
groups and friendships and community and the neighborhood and humanity and those big ideas and big ideals. You know, I also saw an image this morning of the, um, you know, the words that we're all familiar with from the French Revolution, which was occurring as Uranus was being discovered. Mm. Um, and the words in French, I won't attempt to speak them in French because I never learnt French, um, you know, egality, um, which is equality, freedom and what was the other one? Um, liberty. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and equality. These are Aquarian ideals and that's what we aim for, you know, for the entire planet and everybody on it. It's very egalitarian. That's right. Mm -hmm. From we the people. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. With the sun, um, you know, it's interesting that the sun's in Aquarius, but the sun also rules Leo. Um, it does. You know, with this new moon, uh, sorry, uh, full moon in Leo that you're about to talk about. Um, That's right. The, the the sun governs life force and vitality and creativity, uh, the drive for excitement, romantic passion, I have to say. Yes, it does. <laughs> and the need to shine. Yes. The need to shine. Right. And it's about the individual self. You know, the sun is I, this is me, this is who I am. So it rules Leo. Yeah. Um in a in Aquarius, it's more about shining as a unique individual within the context of the greater group. Yeah, absolutely. On an, on an equal footing, but but different an individual. Yeah, and Aquarius is quite can be quite quirky and eccentric. Yep. So it's I say just get your quirk on and get out there, you know, exactly. <laughs> and shine. Exactly. It's time. You know, it's, it's like coming out of the closet, isn't it? Yeah, shine your your unconventional light, you know. That's, um, right. that's exactly what it is. I, I see it. Mm. That's right. And over the years I've noticed that many Aquarians will often say that they have often in their life felt like an outsider or a bit alien because they feel different. But it's true, they are different. Mm -hmm. And anyone with quite a bit of Aquarius energy in their chart, whether it's the sun or not, will feel that, will feel like they see life and understand life and relate to life differently and that the way they think it's different. Yeah, I know that's be that can actually become a, a challenge for them, that's um, right. Aquarius rising. But I think the, the the gift in that is to realise that we are all different anyway. We are. We are all individuals and um, it's not about seeing the differences but it's about seeing the common ground where those differences can come to That's right. And, and and we can put the gifts together collectively, you know. That's, that's right. And so anyone listening who is a part of some kind of a group, you know, we humans love to form groups. Hmm. Um, based on a common interest in something. Mm. It might be plumbing, it might be astrology, it can be, all, you know, an art form, it can be all kinds of things. But within that group, everyone's an individual. Everybody's not the same, but they share a common excitement or joy or passion about something in particular, you know, and that's, mm. that's, very, that's very sun in, in Aquarius to be yourself within the context of the greater group. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to bring in, before I touch on the full moon, uh, on the 23rd, and we're recording this a few days early, so that was yesterday, um, Venus came out of Sagittarius, so there are no more planets in Sag. That's it for Sagittarius for the year. Um, and Venus has now gone into Capricorn and Mercury and Mars are still in Capricorn. So we've still got some significant energy in the sign of Capricorn, you know, keeping keeping us grounded and focused and business-like. And, of course, Venus is the planet of love, of the heart, of beauty. It's that feminine principle. In Capricorn, she can be a little bit business-like about those things. Mm, mm, mm. Um, can I just back you up a little bit? Yes. You said on the 23rd. I thought it was the 26th. Have I got that wrong? I'm talking about Venus. Let me double check. Oh, my... Venus. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, no, the, the full moon is on the 26th. So I just yeah. wanted to throw oh. the Venus oh. in before the full moon. All right. I'm with you. Okay. So 
So, yeah, so there's three planets now um, continuing, you know, the faster moving inner planets through the sign of Capricorn. So the Capricorn energy of, you know, focus and work and responsibilities and dedication to the task and so on is still very much in evidence. Yeah, yeah, a lot of of it around, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, So now we can come to the full moon on the 26th. I'll just unscramble my brain now. Right. <laughs> yes, go for it. Oh, sure. uh, y- yeah. So, so you know, the sun on the 26th, the sun will be at five degrees of Aquarius. So it's, it moves about one degree a day. It will have reached five degree and the moon will have reached five degrees of Leo. So it will be exactly opposite the sun. So we're across that Leo Aquarius axis. And we just touched on that. Hmm. You know, the um, the Leo shining your light as yourself, coming to know who I am. You know, it's the big question of Leo. Who am I? Personal, yeah. individual, creativity and power and expression of that. Yeah, yeah. And Aquarius is the group. So um, I, in my view, Aquarius and Leo are signs that hold a lot of light. Mm. A lot of energy and light here. And this can be, for many people, perhaps a very powerful creative full moon. Um, You know, that could be creativity in business. It could be creativity in any kind of artistic pursuit. Um, You know, Aquarius is a sign that carries a lot of um, mental intelligence, you know, and and Leo is more the intelligence of passion and joy and creative expression. Mm. Um, the so it can be a very high energy full moon. This one, mm. Mm. there's a very important thing going on with it. Of course, is that the sun continues to sit in a conjunction with Pluto. Mm. So Pluto and the sun are opposite this full moon. So this is a Plutonic. Mm. Full moon. Mm. So Pluto being, you know, the the atom bomb of um, very powerful, potent energies. Mm. Um, for some, this could be a very powerful, intense, even dramatic, dare I say, full moon. Because, you know, Leo, let's face it, Leo has a certain drama about it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the nature of the sign. Yes. Absolutely. Yep, and Pluto's not shy of drama and intensity. No, it's quite fiery and dramatic, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And and Pluto also, very often when it's active at a particular time or moment, um, can bring about a death or an ending of something. Mm-hmm. Might be a relationship for somebody, you know, or a phase of life or a job where someone just says I can't do this job anymore it's yeah. done yeah. you know yeah or I can't be like this I can't be what everyone expects me to be anymore mm. so yeah. for some people this could be a bit of a um a watershed or crossing a line you know crossing a um a boundary a crossroads mm. in a mm. powerful way because of the Pluto influence on the full moon can I just add to that um um, that the Leo, because I know a couple of Leos, <laughs> they have this instinctive stage presence and they may even monopolize the limelight, you know. So um, adulation means a lot to Leos, which can make them vulnerable, a bit vulnerable to flattery. Yes. Um, but um, so, and I think that, you know, just, just the full moon in Leo, it, it encourages us to recognize our self-worth, you know. Like you said, who am I and, and what's my value is the other yeah. thing, I think. Um, and I guess one of the things that might come up for people is questioning, um, you know, are we showing ourselves enough self-love and making sure our needs are met? Or are we putting ourselves on a pedestal of our own making and treating people around us like minions, which <laughs> Leo could right. sometimes. Right. So it's-, it's a good time to look at our humility quotient, I think. <laughs> Yes, it, absolutely. I mean, Leo by its nature has a certain kind of bossy tendency. You know, you'll see it a strong sign present very much in the charts of leaders and people who are in charge of things and so on. Mm. 
So absolutely. And there's another side to that is that for some people who are very timid and shy and nervous and anxious about showing themselves, this full moon for them could be a time when they just start showing up perhaps. Yeah. Well, you know, this is what I'm talking about classic Leo energy. I'm yes. Because I know a few Leos too who also like to be in the back docks. You know, they don't want to be in front of the camera or on the stage or that sort of thing. Um, they're happy to get do the work or organise things because they're very good organisers. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's just talking about classic Leo energy because there might be some Leos out there who go, well, that's just absolutely not me, and that, that may actually be true. That may be true. And, um, you know, that, of course, then would be all sorts of other things going on in the chart. But Leo, and you'll see this often in young Leos, it's, interesting in that Leo is often very self-conscious to the point where if they don't really fully understand themselves and know who they are and feel a healthy kind of confidence in that, they can be very self-conscious and very anxious about what what are people seeing? You know, oh, I just said something. Like, what are people thinking? It's very self-conscious sometimes. That can be a bit mm -hmm. of a a bit of a wound in Leo for some, you know. Yeah. But I really I really think that for some people, I think in the collective feel, like this full moon is going to occur in the morning, around 4 o'clock in the morning, but even that whole day could be quite a dramatic, strong day. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just to be aware of that, if that happens, you know, you can just blame it on the full moon and... um you know, and, and for those who like to keep track of what's going on in the world, you know, there could be a bit of drama going on in the yeah. on the world stage, you know, with world leaders and so on. Yeah. Well, I was, you know, I looked up some of the um the people, you know, in the limelight who are Leos, uh, and and people like Barack Obama, Meghan Markle, um, Antonio Banderas, Chris Hemsworth, Madonna. Robert De Niro, all really, you know, um, uh, being in very powerful sort of and on the on the um, public stage, you know. Yes. Um, but very, but I'm thinking of the actors, not so much Meghan Markle, but yes. and Barack Obama. But you know, that they play very powerful roles when they um, choose movies. That's right in their performances. Mm -hmm. That's right. So yeah, it. I am also wondering what are we going to see with um, what we call world leaders, you know. Will there be mm. some big events, big resignations maybe perhaps? Mm. And I'm thinking of the Pluto influence here. Mm. Would be, you know, assassinations or assassination attempts or leaders stepping down, you know, it could be drama. Well, what about with the monarchy, you know, Leo Leo representing the monarchy? Absolutely. Mm. Ab absolutely. And Charles has a Leo ascendant. He's not a Leo, but he's, mm. you know, the, it's very common to see Leo showing up strongly in, in royal family charts. Very. Yeah. In fact, it's unusual for it not to be there. Mm. William and Harry, by the way, don't have Leo in their chart, which mm. is a complete break, astrologically speaking, from tradition. I found that fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think it's sort of like we're going to see this dismantling of the monarchy because those, those times too. are sort of behind us now, I think. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't fit the what the Aquarian age is all about mm. at all. Mm. And all that display of wealth and so on and so on. Yeah, you know, in the hands of a small group of people, that's not what Aquarius is about at all. Mm, mm. Yeah, we're looking for, you know, pretty equal and fair distribution across the board for everybody. Mm. Um, okay, and because these are fixed signs, you know, Leo and Aquarius, and also there's a square to Jupiter in Taurus, these are three fixed signs, and the fixed signs are very powerful. And if you... Um, you know, highlight those energies with a full moon and then throw in Pluto as a very important influencing factor. Pluto squared Jupiter, Pluto conjunct the sun, Pluto opposite the full moon. Mm. That's a really potent mm. mix that's very powerful and um, um, potentially very. The Jupiter and Taurus part of it could be this, could be some big things going on around finances and, yeah. and a 
and economy. Mm, yeah. Yeah. For individuals, so when I say any of these things, I'm speaking about individuals and also in the collective, you know, the bigger. Yeah. And with Leo one. thrown into the mix, it could be around the value of gold. Could be, exactly. Mm -hmm. Gold and Aquarius, of course, is technology. So we're talking about cryptocurrency and so yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And Taurus is literally the banks themselves. Yes. You know, the financial yeah. institutions. <laughs> that's right that's right so yeah it's it's a big full moon um to be sure so and then the following day so actually now and all the week the whole week um and over the weekend because the full moon is on friday morning all over the weekend uranus the ruling planet of aquarius um turns direct mm. having having been moving uh, retrograde or apparently backwards for the last five months since late August. So when these planets are changing direction, mm. and I'll say I'll, I'll say again for those who might be new planets, don't change direction in, this, in the sky. From our perspective on Earth, when we look at the sky, they appear to change direction. Um, so... When a planet is changing direction, its energy and its presence is very, very strong and, and it's really felt. I've noticed this over the years. Mm -hmm. And when it's Uranus, things can get glitchy. Technology can get glitchy. There can be sudden, unexpected, major cataclysmic events going on, you, you know, mm -hmm. with earthquakes and so on, big political events where everyone's saying, oh, my God, have you just heard what happened? Have you heard what's just happened? Mm. It's a very Uranian kind of an event, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, or the power goes down, or there's a blackout in technology for a twenty. I'm not saying these things are going to happen. These are just examples. So, Uranus is a pretty wild energy. It's got a lot to do with technology and um, big unexpected developments that can happen really quickly out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, and you know, advances in science. Yes, also. Yeah, AI, anything. Big to, announcements in the anything scientific. Anything to do with space. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think I saw something the other day about, um, uh, I can't remember which country had just landed on the moon and uh, there's so many other moon missions up this year that are going to happen. And Yeah. Yep, yep that's right. There's a lot going on mm. in that space. Mm. That's right. So, um, so yes, yeah, so, so this is very... Interesting. You also get with Uranus and Aquarius energy, you mentioned it before, revelations. You know, suddenly information breaks out mm. um, and people might say, oh, my God, you know, I've just heard, can you believe it kind of thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and, it might, and, and depending on your point of view, it might be good news to you and it might not be good news to you. Yeah. <laughs> But Uranus is by very nature quite disruptive, but it's in the end it's about liberation and awakening and truth, you know, bigger, higher truth. Yeah. Well, it's been going through Taurus, hasn't it, for quite That's a while, right. actually, since That's 2018. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to form a conjunction with Jupiter also in Taurus. It's Jupiter's the faster planet will is, is approaching it and they will join together Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus around 21 degrees um, in April. That's a pretty major event, astrologically speaking, for 2024. Um, yeah, it could also be a very um, lucky time. Yeah, and very um, freeing and... and um, yeah. Financial windfalls. <laughs> absolutely, for, for some. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All yes, all kinds of things. There's usually big shifts in the collective at times like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to be fascinated to watch that one. Yeah. Um. Okay. So Uranus stationary direct on the 27th is the date, but really over that whole week, the days leading up to it, which is now, and the days after it, that will be in effect on the 28th. 
Mercury, the fast moving planet that's all about our you know thinking and communications and information, makes a conjunction with Mars, the warrior energy at 17 degrees of Capricorn. So that can just really look, it can be a day or two or three when we just think, oh my God, I've got I've got so much on. I'm so busy. I'm very um involved with my business or my job or you know, that kind of thing, just a very active, dynamic um, few days with Mars conjunct Mercury and keeping the mind really stimulated. But in Capricorn, a lot of it will be around practical things, things that I just have to take care of. Yeah. You know, mm. like I've been putting it off for too long, now's the time. Mm. Mm. I always think of book work when I say things like that. You know, okay. But in fact, maybe I should make a note to myself to do it on that day because the energy will be supportive of, you know, just plowing through it and getting it done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on the 20, now this is a beautiful transit. This is one of those transits that I often say a little lightly and facetiously, but I will probably do it myself, to buy a lotto ticket because mm -hmm. Venus in Capricorn at seven degrees of Capricorn mm -hmm. is going to make a perfect trine, which is a harmonious aspect, a beautiful supportive flow of energy with Jupiter at seven degrees of Taurus in the Earth signs. Mm -hmm. And these two planets, when they come together, in some kind of helpful arrangement in the sky or alignment, it is said to be one of the most fortuitous, beneficial kind of um, transits you can have. Pardon me, Venus, you know, the planet of, of beauty, of love, of um, sharing and giving. It's also the primary money planet, mm -hmm. Taurus. Trying Jupiter, the planet of you know good old fashioned luck and good fortune and opportunity, mm. right? So that's a really lovely and look. It could just be a day or a couple of days, day on either side where you just go. I'm feeling great. I feel really grounded. I'm getting things done. I'm enjoying my life. So it may not always be financially mm. evident, mm. But, it, but it can absolutely be. Or suddenly, if you're running your own business, you go, wow having a really good couple of days at the till, you know? Yeah. So this is the 29th of January? Yes, the 29th. So I would say the, you know, the day on either side of that as well. And I'm only giving it a few days because Venus yeah. is one of the faster moving, you know, she moves about a degree a day. Mm -hmm. So so that's, I like to be able to share that good news. That's a lovely transit. And that might just be like, oh, I'm meeting up with all my friends. We're having such a great time. You know, we're going out, we're having dinner and drinking lovely wine and having a nice meal and, you know, it's enjoyable. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, or it could also be you've been thinking about rearranging your finances or something like that mm -hmm. and you suddenly, suddenly it becomes really clear to you what you need to do and it will be mm. beneficial. Mm -hmm. that's the nature of these two planets especially together mm -hmm. it's essentially very beneficial in earth signs in very real practical ways that's you know? not too dissimilar to what you mentioned before coming up in april is it i think it's a little different because of the influence of uranus oh okay because in april it's jupiter, it's conjunct jupiter and, and uranus yeah yeah that's that adds a whole other kind of dimension really Okay. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, Venus and Jupiter are the two brightest stars in our sky. They're traditionally known as the benefics. Yes, yeah. You know, so it's lovely. I always, it always makes me happy when I see things like that. It's very, I think it's an excellent one for a couple of days around manifesting mm -hmm. because of the nature of the planets and their inner signs. Yes, yeah. What do you want to actually manifest? This is a wonderful opportunity to to ride that energy and make the most of it in some way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I think so too. So I wanted to make sure people know about that one. Um, and then on the 30th, we will have Mars at 19 of Capricorn trining Uranus 
at 19 of Taurus. So there's there's some nice energy actually flowing between Capricorn and Taurus over this couple of weeks. Hmm. Yeah, some really, and even though he would talk about Mars and Uranus, which are two quite dynamic energies, it can be um, helpful because it's what we call a trine. They're in a harmonious flow with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it might just be, wow, I feel so energized and so inspired. I feel like I could climb mountains today. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I um, like to do that. <laughs> have the energy to climb mountains. Yeah, ener- yes, I know. Me too. The thought of it, I go, oh, really? But to have that kind of physical energy and strength and yeah so it could be quite an exciting high energy day but it's in earth signs which helps to keep it a bit kind of grounded you know it's not off in the um nether netherland somewhere you know it's pretty grounded and realistic Mm. um so then um that pretty much leads us up to, oh, on the 5th of February, Mercury will then leave Capricorn mm-hmm. and move into Aquarius. So really, you know, bringing more energy into Aquarius. And Mercury, the mind communications, is pretty happy to be in Aquarius and air sign. It's mm-hmm. going to really stimulate communications in a big way. And our mental capacity you know we're just going to feel switched on mentally goody because i'm i'm record i'm being interviewed for a documentary that day so that'll be really good that's great (laughs) perfect for you perfect (laughs) fantastic um and on the fifth mercury in aquarius will make a conjunction with pluto so that can be a very powerful potent day for communications Mm. Um, and that leads us to the 10th of February, which is the new moon. Mm. And that new moon, <clears throat> pardon me, of course, will be in Aquarius. Ah. And on that new moon, we'll have Pluto conjunct Mercury and the sun conjunct the moon, all in Aquarius. And that new moon also marks the start of the Chinese yeah. New Year and yeah. the Year of the Dragon. Yeah. But that's a pretty potent um, new moon, that one. The green wood uh, dragon, to be specific. Yes, exactly, the green wood dragon. Mm. Yeah, which, you know, is said amongst the Chinese astrologers and people who, who know Chinese astrology a lot more than I do that it can be a wonderful opportunity for manifestation, mm. you know, or really, you know, great things happening in a manifest kind of a way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So let's ride the dragon. Yes, let's. Ride the waves and ride the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. And that, that you know, being a dragon year, that really adds to the potency of the whole flavour of the year as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, many are saying this is going to be a pretty pivotal year, although the whole decade is really, but, yeah. It's a sizzling of a year. Yes, I think so too. For things to come. Watch the trailer. <laughs> Watch, yes, the trailer. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My God, amazing times. And then on the 13th, just briefly, Mars leaves Capricorn and goes into Aquarius. Oh, Mars in Aquarius. And then on the 17th, Venus goes into Aquarius. So we're, we're going to have a period where there's a whole bunch of planets going on in Aquarius. And so I, when I see things like that, I always imagine babies being born. Yeah. You know, five planets in Aquarius. Wow. Wow, we, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I love all that Aquarian energy, I have to say. All those I know, I know. I know it's not um it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for you know really for most people who are into astrology, and that would include anyone listening to this, if or well, they wouldn't be interested in astrology, they're usually going to have Aquarius in their in their makeup in their nature for sure. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I, I think that the 
big theme with Pluto and Aquarius, though, is things have a use-by date. And if you don't chuck it out and deal with it yourself or process it, Pluto is going to come along and do it for you. And, Absolutely. And it probably won't be a great thing. It's better that you do it prior to, you know. Yeah, so, you know, I'll be willing to at least meet him halfway and be, yes. and be part of the process, you know, yes. participate in the process. Yes, yes. It's, um, yeah. and, and that's where astrology can help because if we know these things are happening in our own chart, you go, okay, like, you know, you're coming up with a big Pluto transit, just knowing that. Mm. Mm. If you didn't know that, you'd be thinking, what the hell's going on? Mm. Well, I'm just getting ready to ride the wave, you know. Just exactly. Exactly. Go with it. That's it. Mm. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thanks so much for that. That was really good. And um, Very welcome. And we, we made it with the break in the early part, but we got there in the end. Yes, and I feel quite energised. Must be all that Aquarian and energy Def and, you know, the sun and Pluto. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> Here we go. There's already a lot happening. I know, I know. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Um, and um, people watching, if you enjoyed that, please um, give us a thumbs up and leave your comments. And uh, if you feel so moved to do so, share it around. And um, but remember to subscribe so that you get notifications of future episodes being uploaded. So until next time, uh, we'll see you very soon. Stay safe and be blessed. Thanks, Cheryl. Bye, everyone. Bye.